A blessed day to all of you, sisters and brothers, and to those who join us in worship through this live stream at the Diocesan Shrine of Jesus, the Divine Word, in Christ the King Mission Seminary, Quezon City. The Church celebrates today the solemnity of Saints Peter and Paul, Apostles. Our Mass presider is Reverend Father Louis Punzalan, SVD. Our celebration and devotion to Christ the King will now begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, my dear people of God, we celebrate today the solemnity of Saints Peter and Paul. Our Lord Jesus built His Church on the foundation of the Apostles. Today we celebrate a joint feast of these two great Apostles, a practice that goes back at least to the time of Constantine. Their special place in the history of the Church is of paramount importance to us. The tombs of Peter and Paul and their basilicas are in Rome in order to perpetuate their memory as the two great pillars of Christianity. Peter and Paul stand out as the two major apostles of Jesus at the beginning of the Church. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly seen in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In, In the, the glory, glory of God, God the, the Father. Father. Amen. Glory to God, glory, glory to God, God, glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace on earth, peace to people of good Let us pray. O God, who on the solemnity of the Apostles Peter and Paul, give us the noble and holy joy of this day. Grant, we pray, that your Church may in all things follow the teaching of those through whom she received the beginnings of right religion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, King Herod laid hands upon some members of the church to harm them. He had James, the brother of John, killed by the sword. And when he saw that this was pleasing to the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. It was the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. He had taken him into custody and put in prison, under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each. He intended to bring him before the people after Passover. Peter thus was being kept in prison, but prayer by the church was fervently being made to God on his behalf. On the very night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter, secured by double chains, was slipping between two soldiers, while outside the door, guards kept watch on the prison. Suddenly, the angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the cell. He tapped Peter on the side and awakened him, saying, Get up quickly. The chains fell from his wrists. The angel said to him, Put on your belt and your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, Put on your cloak and follow me. So he followed him out, not realizing that what was happening through the angel was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. He passed the first guard, then the second, and came to the iron gate leading out to the city, which opened for them by itself. They emerged and made their way down an alley, and suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter recovered his senses and said, Now I know for certain that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod, and from all the Jews people were expecting. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord, and lowly will hear me and be glad. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together exalt his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress, he saved him. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Bless the man who takes refuge in him. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. I, Paul, am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all those who have longed for his appearance. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. 
the Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise to honor the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They answered, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it i will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven my dear friends in christ this is the gospel, the good news of our salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You must have noticed that the liturgical color for today is red. The reason is because today we celebrate the memory of two of the great apostles of the Lord. We celebrate today the solemnity of Saints Peter and Paul. One guards the heavenly gate, Peter. One taught mankind its creed, Paul. Peter and Paul, they are two martyred apostles they are two icons of discipleship. They are the two heroes of the gospel. They are the two crowning jewels of the church. They are the two pillars of Christianity. They are the two patrons of the Catholic faith. Peter is known as the Prince of the Apostles. Paul is known as the Apostle to the Gentiles. One betrayed the Master. The other persecuted the Master. But there must be a reason for the solemnity of Saints Peter and Paul, a reason other than Peter and Paul, why do we have to celebrate the joint feast of these two great men? There are already separate feasts that the church celebrates in their honor. There is a feast in honor of the chair of St. Peter on February 22nd. There is another feast in honor of the conversion of St. Paul on January 25. So why celebrate 
another feast in their honor jointly when they already have separate feasts. My dear brothers and sisters, I was reading, I was trying to find out the answer a few days ago, and I encountered the most beautiful answer from St. Augustine himself. Why then is it necessary to have a common feast in honor of both Peter and Paul? Listen to what St. Augustine says. I quote, One day is assigned for the celebration of the martyrdom of these two apostles. But these two are one. Although their martyrdom occurred on different dates, they are one. Peter went first. Paul followed. We celebrate the feast day which is made sacred for us by the blood of these martyred apostles. Let us be proud of their faith. Let us love their life. Let us love their trials. Let us appreciate their passion. Let us think about their profession and their vocation and their teaching. End of quote. From earliest times, my dear friends, these two great men were held in high esteem by the church. There is even evidence that the solemnity of Saints Peter and Paul together on June 29 that we are celebrating today actually started as early as the middle of the third century. Their tombs and their basilicas are located in Rome. And I'm sure many of you, our listeners, even here in the Philippines and those in other countries, the Filipino Catholics, many of us, myself included, we have visited the Basilica of St. Peter in Rome and the Basilica of St. Paul outside the walls where both are venerated by the Catholic faithful. My dear friends, in their lifetime, Peter and Paul did not actually work closely together. Peter was called by the Lord directly. He was given the keys of the kingdom. Peter is portrayed in icons carrying the keys of heaven. Peter probably died in 64 AD under Nero. He was a Galilean fisherman. He was the spokesman of the twelve. He was primus inter pares, the first among equals. Peter represents unity and universality of the church. Paul, meanwhile, probably never met Jesus personally. They probably never met each other face to face. He was once a persecutor of the church. His conversion came about through a vision on the road to Damascus. Paul's inspiration and style of presenting the gospel came from visions and charismatic experiences. Paul is portrayed in icons carrying either a sword or a book. Paul probably died in Rome in 67 AD. Paul was a Pharisee. His letters may be dated from about 50 to 65 AD. Paul was a highly learned man. He was highly educated. He studied under the best teachers at the time. And Paul was multilingual. 
He could speak several languages. My dear friends, a short homily will not be sufficient to capture the lives and mission of these two great men. But even if Peter and Paul did not always agree in life, they agreed in death. Both suffered the same kind of death, the same kind of martyrdom in the city of Rome. Finally, today, in the preface of the Mass, it says something beautiful about these two great men. And I quote the preface of the Mass. Peter, our leader in the faith. Paul, its fearless preacher. Each in his chosen way, gathered into unity the one family of Christ, both shared a martyr's death, and they are praised throughout the world. Peter established the early church in the heart of the people of Israel. Paul extended the church to the ends of the earth. The one denied the master. The other persecuted him. The one failed Jesus because of weakness and cowardice. The other failed Jesus because of, because of ignorance and prejudice. But both were rehabilitated by the Lord. Both shed their blood for the same Jesus. Amen. Let us all stand and let us now profess the faith of the apostles, especially Peter and Paul, the short version only. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We bring our intentions to the Father with that same faith of the apostles Peter and Paul, with the faith of the fishermen on whom the church is built, and the faith of the teacher of so many nations. Let our response be, Lord, be our rock. Lord, be our rock. That Pope Francis successor of saint peter may bear the keys of the kingdom with wisdom and love we pray lord be our rock that missionaries in foreign land may have the seal which saint peter had in bringing the good news we pray lord be our rock that we may love our faith and eagerly share it with others we pray Lord, be our rock, that those who are suffering on account of their faith may find strength in the blood shed by the apostles. We pray, Lord, be our rock, for the most vulnerable in the population, our senior citizen, those who have pre-existing medical conditions, the unemployed and the poor, that they may remain resolute in their belief that God will protect them from illness and help them during these trying times. We pray, 
Lord, be our rock. That the faithful departed may be made worthy of the crown of righteousness. We pray, Lord, Lord be, our, be rock. our rock. And we pray for other intentions. We Almighty pray. Lord be our rock. Almighty God and Father, hear the prayers of this community gathered in the faith of the apostles and helped by their intercession. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the prayer of the apostles Peter and Paul, O Lord, accompany the sacrificial gift that we present to your name for consecration. And may their intercession make us devoted to you in celebration of the sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Let Lord. Let us now give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by your providence, the blessed apostles Peter and Paul bring us joy. Peter, foremost in confessing the faith, Paul, its outstanding preacher. Peter, who established the early church from the remnant of Israel, Paul, master and teacher of the Gentiles that you call. And so each in a different way, gathered together the one family of Christ, and revered together throughout the world, they share one martyr's crown. And therefore, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Yes. 
are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created, rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, as we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, he broke the bread, he gave it to the disciples, and he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said a blessing. He gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate, O Lord, the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, His wondrous resurrection, His ascension into heaven, as we look forward to His second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of Christ and filled with His Holy Spirit, may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May He make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, all the apostles, especially Peter and Paul, the glorious martyrs, all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Onesto, our Bishop, the order of bishops, the clergy and religious, the missionaries and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful God, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world and to our departed brothers and sisters especially Maria Punsalan and Maximo Sacro, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
As we celebrate today the solemnity of Peter and Paul, let us pray for the intentions of the Holy Father, Pope Francis, who is the successor of the Apostles. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today us our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joy and in hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. You said, Lord, to the apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us greet one another with a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Jesus, word of love. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Jesus, Lamb of God. Take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. The Lord said to Peter, You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. My dear friends, this is Jesus. The Lamb of God who takes away our sins and the sin of the world. Happy are those invited to his banquet. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Ito ang aking katawan, handog ko sa inyo. Ito ang kalis ng bagong tipan sa Sa 
Diyos sa katawang handog sa anyo. Walhati sa Diyos sa bagong tipan sa aking dugo. Sa pagtanggap niyo sa akin ipahayag ninyo. Aking kamatayan hanggang sa pagparito ko. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, who have been renewed by this sacrament, so to live in the church, that persevering in the breaking of the bread and in the teaching of the apostles Peter and Paul, we may be one in heart and soul, made steadfast in your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Horatio Imperata, merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country and the whole world. We pray for our health workers, that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, Saint Raphael the Archangel, San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Saints Arnold Jensen and Joseph Reynademitz, pray for us. Magandang umaga sa inyong lahat sa mga nasa Pilipinas at sa mga nasa ibang bansa naman ay magandang gabi, magandang hating gabi sa inyong lahat. Naririto na naman po ang pari na palaging kumakatok sa inyong mga gininto ang puso upang manawagan at humingi ng tulong para sa ating mga seminarista. Hindi po tayo napapagod at nagsasawang lumapit sa mga nananampalataya sa mga tumutulong sa atin at may balak tumulong na nangangailangan po kami ng sponsors, donors or benefactors for our seminarian here at Christ the King Mission Seminary in Quezon City, Philippines because some of our seminarians come from financially handicapped families. Kung nais po ninyong tumulong at makipag-ugnayan, ay maaari ninyo akong padalhan ng email sa email address na nakapaskil sa inyong harapan ngayong umagang ito. 
ckmsdonorcare at gmail.com At kung gusto po naman ninyong tuluyan ang magpadala ng inyong tulong ay mayroon din tayong bank details, bank account, Banco de Oro, account name Divine Word Mission Seminary Inc. At ang account number naman ay 000-220-191247. Meron din tayong dalawang GCash numbers. Kung puno na yung isa, pwede naman sa isa. So, balit yung dalawang yan ay hindi naman sabay na pupuno. Ganun pa man ay nagpapasalamat po kami sa mga tumulong na at patuloy pang tumutulong. Ang aming tanging maisusukli at maibabalik sa inyo ay ang aming mga panalangin para sa inyong kabutihan, sa inyong kalusugan at kaligayahan at pagkakaisa ng inyong pamilya. Maraming 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 salamat po mula sa puso ng mga SVD dito sa Christ the King Mission Seminary. Let us all stand, please. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace and defend and love your Catholic faith. Thanks be to God. Through all eternity